Hi, my name's Scott, the Miniature Maniac, and today we'll be exploring the spooky world of freehanding. Or, what plain old artists just call regular art. Except this time it's on really small canvases. What up, mini family? Freehanding is a pretty difficult painting branch of our hobby that a lot of people avoid entirely in their painting career. I've had some relative success with freehanding in the past and I hope to share some hot tips with you all so you can have more success when you attempt freehanding. At the end of the video, we'll also go through this entire freehand on a miniature I 3D printed from today's sponsor, Titan Forge Miniatures. Let's start with tip number one. There's no sense in trying to replicate the Mona Lisa on your Knight Titan's armor plates. I didn't start out with the cracking flesh on this bust. I started out with something much simpler and uglier, like lettering or basic iconography, like a teardrop and a big surface like a rhino or a chapter symbol on a shoulder pad, or even an Easter egg that I painted symbols onto. You gotta give yourself a fighting chance with something basic. If you find success with a simple pattern, it's more likely that you'll move on to something more complicated in the future. Tip number two. You thought we were gonna freehand today? <laughs> Think again! There are many ways to get the effect that you want with a few simple cheats. For instance, if your design involves a large circle, don't paint the circle, you dingus! Create a mask with some masking tape. Cut a hole in the masking tape with a circle cutter of any variety. And then stick that mask to your miniature and apply paint either with a paintbrush or an airbrush. It should be noted that on surfaces with texture, masks don't work that great. The flatter the surface, the better the mask will operate. And this totally was not a lesson that I learned while filming this video. If you're not keen on making your own masks, there are a few companies that create legally yet distinct iconography for you to use on your miniature. Just apply them and then put paint over them. But what if you want a mask for something that doesn't already exist or is a little bit hard to replicate with simple tools? Step one is to print out your symbol or image at the scale you want it to be at on your miniature. Trim it out and then tape it on top of a piece of masking tape. Then, with an X-Acto knife and some patience, Cut out the perimeter of the shape. Once done, what you will reveal below the image is a mask that you can use for freehand. This is actually a technique that I discovered from Carol Rudick, and I'm gonna show you an image right now that's gonna make you wanna break your painting tool. So, sir, put the brushes down. Sir, put the brushes down, sir. Sir, step away from the brushes. <laughs> I've got a code of 42 here. There's a parent trying to snap his brushes in half. One of the most difficult things for me when it comes to freehanding is nailing the perimeter of whatever it is we're trying to freehand, and masking helps with that a lot. Once you get that done, you can just paint inside the lines. In fact, if we take a look at the Carol image again, sir, step away from the brushes, sir, we can see on more complicated renderings that he cuts out specific shapes on his characters, which will allow him to get the position and scale correct for each part of his freehand. Pretty cool. You know who's also pretty cool? The sponsor for this video. Titan Forge is a company that sculpts and sells miniatures for you to print at home on your resin 3D printer for tabletop games. They have heroes, they have monsters, terrain, bases, everything, you name it. You can find a lot of their miniatures on their Patreon website. For 10 bucks a month, you get access to their monthly releases. In the month of March, they're releasing Cyberpunk and Dragon Empire miniatures. You can find Dragon Cavalry, Chariots, this cool miniature we're painting now, along with four-armed bruisers, cyborg samurais, and Yakuza-inspired sci-fi mobsters. Also, what they have going on right now is something called March Madness. If you sign up for their Patreon in March, you get total 180 miniatures. It's terrain, it's bases, it's miniatures, it's everything. If you ever missed one of their sculpts they released in a previous month, you can always go buy it for a few bucks on their My Mini Factory website. 3D resin printing is becoming more and more accessible and Patreon campaigns like this provide great monthly value for you to crank out minis. You can find all their stuff linked in the description below. Thank you Titan Forge Managers, now back to the video. Tip number three. Okay, so let's say you're not going to cheat. When we're painting miniatures, it's very important to have a good stable grip on the miniature. And this is especially true when we're freehanding. 
On the model we're painting today, the flag itself prints detached. So I left it apart while doing freehand so I could better grip it. Consider doing something similar on your miniature where possible. Additionally, you should wear a glove or cover the miniature in plastic wrap or masking tape to prevent paint from rubbing off while you are inevitably manhandling it. And on that same subject, if the freehand is the last part of the miniature, meaning that you painted the entire thing and not left the freehand till the end, letting the paint cure a few days will allow it to come up to strength, again, further preventing paint from wiping off because of your nasty Dorito fingers. Well, that's kind of rude. Tip number four. You shouldn't try to nail the image or logo you're going for in one shot. It makes a lot more sense to kind of map out the basic shapes first and then make it more complicated. For instance, if I'm doing a tactical marine arrow, I'll make a cross and then connect the wings of the cross to the tip to make a triangle and then make the stem of the cross wider and wider until it's the width that I want. Sometimes it makes sense to start small and then expand it. For instance, if I need to get an image right in the center of a shield, I'll start with a single dot and then I'll adjust it on the left or the right to make sure it's in the center. But I'm always checking my work at each stage. I don't try to get the entire circle right away, right in the middle. Start simple and then make it more complicated as you go. Tip number five, mistakes will be made. I mean, maybe by you, but not by me. You should expect them to happen, and when you do, you can fix them. Expect there to be a lot of tedious back and forth adjusting your image. To make that tedious back and forth a little bit more bearable, consider mapping out your initial image in a color that's closer to your background color. For instance, if I want to paint a red rose on a white shield, instead of starting with red, I'll start with pink. Pink is a lot easier to correct the mistakes of on white as opposed to red. Paint smart. Paint S smart. Huh? Tip number six. Sometimes making a correction is too difficult when you've made a mistake, which again is something that I never did. When it would take too long or it's too difficult to try to fix a mistake that you've made on your freehand, just cover it up when it makes sense with mud or battle damage. Tip number seven, pray to whatever gods you need to pray to to make this shit work. Hi there. My top tip for painting freehand is to use photographic and other artistic references. It doesn't matter if you're painting something simple like a space marine shoulder pad, filigree on the rear of a cloak, or even a lavish freehand banner. Using photographic references allows you to understand the subject from a perspective of shape, texture and lighting. It also means you're less likely to miss out details that would otherwise make your freehand look more realistic. Good luck in your future freehand. If you didn't know who that was, that was Richard Gray and he is a legendary freehander. If you want to see more of his works, you can find them on Instagram or if you want to see him painting, you can find that on Patreon. Both things linked in the description below. All right, with those hot tips out of the way, let's paint a maroon fish, shall we? My first step is to prime the banner white because I want the flag to be white. Okay, okay, so far this is pretty easy. And then you paint the fish. Okay, tutorial over. Peace. I, I, how could you not make that joke, okay? How could you not make the owl joke? One thing I'll note is that the banner we're painting on is not flat. So a pretty good question you might ask is, do we deal with shading the white parts now or later? I would say if you expect to make absolutely zero mistakes, you could shade the white now. So, me, obviously. If your skill levels are more pedestrian, I would wait to shade the white parts. When fixing mistakes you make, it'll be hard to replicate the gradual blends on the surface below. Dealing with one flat color is much easier. All right, on to mapping out our shape. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm starting with the color that more closely resembles my background color to make corrections easier, which in this case is pink. The image that I'm copying is sitting right next to me and I'm referencing it constantly. Another good question is, is why am I not using the mask solution that I mentioned earlier? Well, I'm stupid and also a tryhard. Notice how I'm tackling each part of the fish at a time as opposed to going for the whole thing at once, slowly reaching the shape that I want.
once that's outlined, then I start to fill it in with maroon. Don't be afraid at any point to come in with your background color to refine your shape, even if you've moved on in your freehand. Despite applying the maroon color, I'm still correcting the perimeter with white. Next up, we're going to add some of the fish scales and other details present on the design. To do this, we need to use white. We need the paint to flow off of our brush very nicely, but we also don't want to thin it too much because then our white will be super transparent and we'll need to reapply super tiny lines repeatedly, and that does not sound fun. Instead of thinning our paint with water, we'll thin it with white ink. This will allow us to reach the desired viscosity, but also stay fairly transparent. With this mixture, I'll begin to add in the fin details, the eye, the scales, and so on. At this stage, you'll likely have some rough brush strokes. That's okay. We'll go back and forth mixing those mistakes with maroon and white to get nice, bold, clean lines. Once we have the shape and the detail mapped out, you could honestly stop here and be happy. But the hard work is done and now we can really elevate the piece by adding in some shading and some highlighting. Because everything is traced out, we just need to stay inside the lines. I chose to hide the fish in two passes, once with an orange and then a follow up with yellow. It's important to work slowly. You won't hit full opacity with your colors on one go through, so just stay inside the lines and do multiple passes. The scales are so small on this fish that blending isn't really something we're concerned about. Just get a nice opaque color. Once we finish with that step, I'll add in some of the water droplets on the original artwork. This is just more of the same stuff as before. I decided to do this now because I had some space on the banner that I could fill up with more detail, so why not? After that was all finished, I painted the miniature and attached the banner to it. I like how my fish turned out with its fun colors. Was there any freehanding advice that you guys are aware of that I missed? feel free to leave it in the comments section along with whatever freehand project you'd like to attempt on your miniatures. Thanks for watching my video guys all the way to the end. I super appreciate it. If you guys like the channel and you want to support it, there are a number of ways that you can do it. Namely Patreon where you can get access to a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and chat about your miniature painting project or your favorite kind of closets to hide in. Yeah. You can also purchase hobby equipment that I recommend in the description or buy miniatures that I produce like my vampire miniatures. All things linked in the description below. Don't forget about this week's sponsor, Titan Forge Miniatures. They make some pretty cool files for you to print at home. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to...